So for section 5.5, we're going to be multiplying different polynomials together. I'm going to start off with uh, what should be a review of just multiplying, um, and then we're going to expand it to uh, multiplying polynomials. But if we had 5x times 6x, we should be comfortable with the rules um, that 5 times 6 would multiply. So we multiply what the 5 with the 6 and get 30. And then x times x is x squared. Notice here we're not adding them. We are multiplying, so we use the rules for multiplying. Next one, I have the negative 2 times 3. So it should multiply to give us negative 6. x times x squared would multiply to give us x to the third. And y times y would be y squared. Like I said, these rules should be a review at this point because we've had a previous section going over all the laws of exponents here. 7 times negative 4 would give us negative 28. We're multiplying, right? x to the fifth times x to the third is x to the eighth. When we multiply those, we add the exponents, which means we add the number of times we multiply x. We should have already written all this out to see why when I multiply these together, I end up with eight x's multiplied. Okay, But we are still multiplying. We multiply the numbers, and when I multiply the x's, we add the exponents. What about that y? Right? There's no other y with it, so we bring it over. So that's kind of a quick review of our rules for multiplying. Now we're going to kick it up a notch. What if I have x times x plus 3? Well, we're going to do what's called distributing. That's where we multiply a term across a group. We multiply a group across a group. Okay. So we're going to take this x and we're going to multiply it across the x and the 3. Why can we just do that? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Here I have some numbers that I have 5 times 5 plus 3. Can I do that distributing 5 and have it still give me the right answer? Well, you're like, well, I wouldn't need to. I could add the 5 and the 3. Okay, so you're telling me that this is just 5 times 8, or this is just 40, right? What if I had distributed? Would it change the answer? What if I had done 5 times 5 and got 25? 5 times 3 plus 15. What's 25 plus 15? We end up with the same answer. So when I, when I um, have to distribute, like in this example, then it, it's good to know that when I don't have to, either way I get the same answer. So I can take this x and I can distribute it. x times x is x squared plus x times 3 would be 3x. Do not combine those. Those are not like terms. That would be it, just distributing that x. Kick it up a notch. If I take this 2x squared and I distribute it, now what's it going to do? I'm taking this entire group and I'm multiplying it by 2x squared. It means that 2x squared multiplies across each term, across all the adding and subtracting. So 2x squared times x to the third, 2 times a 1, so remember there's an implied 1 there, would give me 2. x squared and x to the third should be x to the fifth minus 2 times 7 x squared x squared multiplies to give me x to the fourth. 2 times 10 gives us 20. x squared times x, I end up with 3 of them. And 2 times 4, negative 8. And there's just an x squared. So that term multiplies across everything in the entire second group. What happens when I have more than one term? Well, it's still distributing, but it changes it a little bit. We take everything in the first group and multiply it across everything in the second group. Okay, So basically, I distribute each term in the first group. I take that x first, and I distribute it to both terms. And then I'll take the second term, the 5, and distribute it across both terms. I start with x times x, which is x squared. x times 4, which is 4x. 5 times x, which is 5x, and 5 times 4, which is 20. Notice what did we just do there, right? We applied the rules of multiplying. We are multiplying in this section, in this section here. Um, so we're doing the rules of multiplying. Don't make this uh, 5 and 4 into a 9. That's utter nonsense. We were multiplying there, okay? We multiply everything in the first group across everything in the second. Second, we look for any like terms. This can be simplified. Those two in the middle are like terms. So I end up with x squared plus 4 and 5 add to make 9. The x, since we are adding here, stays an x. 
differentiate when I'm multiplying, use those rules. When I'm adding and subtracting, use those rules. They are a different set of rules. And this would be it. We cannot combine the x squared and the 9x. They are not like terms. Let's keep going. 4x minus 3 times x minus 2 here. We start with the 4x times x gives us 4x times negative 2 gives us 4 times negative 2. Negative 3 times x gives us. And negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. Combining like terms, we have 4x squared minus 11x plus 6. How did we get that negative 11? We combine negative 8 plus negative 3 to get negative 11 using rules of adding. Okay. I do want to show you the area model, and this is something that um, if you're not comfortable with the, the algebraic way of approaching it, this makes it a little more visual. Um, it does become somewhat impractic impractical um, when they get a little crazy, but uh, it has some really cool applications in Chapter 6, so I, I do want to go over it. So what you do is you take basically the first group, okay, we're going to take this first group, and we set it on one side, 4x minus 3, so it's separated into two sections. And then we take the uh, x minus 2, and we put it in its own section. But notice it's also separated, two terms and two terms. And then I can find the area of each of these by multiplying. 4x times x is 4x squared. This little rectangle right here would be x by negative 3. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. So basically, we have distributed that x to both of these terms. Let's do the same thing with the negative 2. Negative 2 times... 4x gives us negative 8x, and negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Keep in mind, this is not your answer. Don't leave your answer like this. You do need to combine um, the negative 3x and the 8x. So these two are like terms. They need to combine. But you also need to make sure you write this in descending order, which means what? The highest power, the x squared, comes first. These two combine to make negative 11x, and then the plus 6. We put it in descending order from the highest degree to the lowest degree, which is no, no power there, right? Okay. Last one. Show me you can do this, right? Can you distribute? You're like, oh, this is scarier. Well, the rules don't change. The distributing said take everything in the first group and multiply it across everything in the second group. Take this first term and distribute it across everything in that group. 5x to the 4th times x squared gives us 5x to the 6th. 5x to the 4th times 2x gives us 10x to the 5th. That plus sign's going to drive me crazy. All right. And we're done with that first term. Have I done everything in the first group but crossed everything in the second? No. We have a negative 2x squared, so we got to distribute that. Negative 2x squared times x squared gives us negative 2x to the fourth. Negative 2x squared times positive 2x gives us negative 4x to the third. Am I done distributing now? Well, I've done the 5x squared. I've done the negative 2x squared. I have not done the 3x, so we're not done distributing. We need to also take that 3x and multiply it. This is where the little uh, lines get a little crazy, but basically that 3x will also distribute each term. So 3x times x squared gives us 3x to the third plus 3 times 2 is 6x squared. All done? Now keep in mind, if there are any like terms, and there happen to be some right here, you do need to combine them. Put this in descending order, so starting at the highest power, then the next highest exponent, then the next highest exponent, and then those two became negative 4 plus 3. Notice right here, that's not going to become negative 12. That's not going to become x to the 6th. Up here we were multiplying. Down here we are adding, combining to get negative 1 x to the 3rd plus 6x squared. And that's how I would want that. Um, I do also want to show you, because that's a lot to keep track of algebraically. This might be less intimidating if we can make it uh, into an area model. So what you do is you take the 5x to the 4th, minus 2x squared plus 3x, three separate terms, so three separate sections of the box. And then the other group was x squared plus 2x, 
So then I put the x squared and the plus 2x right here. What do we do now? Well, we find the area of each of these rectangles. 5x to the 6th, 2x to the 4th, 3x to the 3rd, 10x to the 5th, 4x to the 3rd, and 6x squared. Do not forget to combine, since these are like terms, they'll combine. So writing our answer, that would be 5x to the 6th, 10x to the 5th, putting it in descending order, 2x to the 4th, these combine to make negative 1x to the 3rd, and plus 6x squared. My answer did not change. If you like the area model, if that's a nice way of organizing it, please do that. I've seen people uh, get through intermediate algebra very successfully with just that skill alone. So um, I encourage that. <clears throat> Let me also say real quick, um, I know I had somebody that wanted to take this um, 5x to the 4th minus 2x squared plus 3x times x squared plus 2x. And they wanted to distribute it all backwards. Um, let me just tell you right now, this is okay. You can distribute. I can multiply in any order. So I can distribute the first group forward, or I can distribute the second group back. If that irritates you, then don't do it. If that's intimidating, don't do it. But somebody was going, well, I just want to do it that way. Okay, go ahead. That doesn't bother me at all. Do that and verify. You should get the same answer. 5x to the 6th, 2x to the 4th, 3x to the 3rd, minus 4. Right? It's, it's all going to turn into the same thing. Okay, um, that's it. So good job. We have one more section.